this is a robot. Uh, robotics are a big part of our life right now, uh, but I wanted to show you what some of these robots can actually do. I'm joined now by uh, Charlie Kemp. He's the director of the Center for Healthcare Robotics at Georgia Tech. Our good friends at Georgia Tech, as you know, uh, populate a lot of our uh, big eye segments, big ideas. Charlie, what does this do? Well, so this is a, a robot called yep. the Personal Robot 2. Yep. And it's, the notion is it's sort of like a personal computer. Mm -hmm. And this is a research robot. So Willow Garage has produced a bunch of these and handed them out across the world so the researchers like me can it's actually work with them. Willow Garage is a separate company. They're in Will California. Willow Garage is the company that makes yep. this yep. robot. Yep. So they decide, they build a robot, and other companies do this, but you mm -hmm. build, they build a robot with as many capabilities as possible, and then right. they send it out to you researchers to That's say... That's right. Create applications, create exactly. things that this thing can do. So that we don't have to build it from scratch. Right. We can actually focus you on... You can start solving problems That's with it. exactly right. Okay, show right. me what, so, some of the well, things this thing so, can do. So first of all, it's got these arms, and yep. they're very articulate, like our arms. Yep. And they're also compliant. So if you were to go into a factory and to put on an arm there, it's like a brick wall. Right. So that's that's what we think is very important. Okay. It also has this mobile base that can mm -hmm. move in any direction. So it actually can go side to side, for example. And then finally, this here... Lots of sensors, and that's going to be. Let's move this around a little hey, bit. Let's see. Hey, sure, Travis, sure. you just want to show they can go side to side here. Yeah, yeah. So it's not constrained to sort of move yep. forward like a car. And then here there are lots of sensors, so it can see the world and better interact with it. Give us a demo. So yeah, so the demo here, first of all, uh, just to kind of give the background, the research project at Georgia Tech, we're yep. focusing on how this type of robot could make a difference mm -hmm. for older adults. Yep. And the notion is that the robot could provide more independence, a higher quality of life, yep. and let them live at home longer. So one big problem for older adults is medicine. Yep. How do you remember what medicine to take when? Yep. And so our, our idea is that robots can worry about that. Mm -hmm. They can worry about which medicine has to go to which person at which time. Right. And so what we're going to show here is a demonstration which uses this. Okay. It's an RFID tag. Right. It's just super cheap, like 10 right. cents, right. self-adhesive. And... Uh, We've put one of these on this necklace, okay. and we'd like you to wear this okay. necklace. Fair enough. So this so. identifies me in some so fashion. So this is going to tell the robot you're the guy who... It, it can is, read an RFID. RFID, by the way, is like your tags used to get into work, like your toll passes. Exactly. It's, it's, it's a very ubiquitous exactly. way of identifying And things. this happens to be pretty long range. Okay. It's also it's collaborative work with uh, Professor Matt Reynolds at Duke University. Okay. So this so, computer, this, this robot now knows who I so, am because well, of this. Well, that's right. So that's going to tell it you're, you're the guy who's supposed to receive the medicine. So my student, Travis, he's going to yep. start this up. So you see those antennas that are moving around? Yep. They're looking for that tag because okay. they know that's, that's what it, uh, it's looking for. Okay. So once they've found it, the robot's going to turn towards you. So, okay, wow. so it found the tag. It knows that you're the person. Okay. Now it's going to hold those antennas fixed, and whichever one gets a stronger signal, right. that tells it how to turn. Okay. So it's just going to move to you. You could move to the side, and it would follow you. It's, you'll find that it turns. Oh, that's interesting. And All now right, when, so it gets, it, when it gets to you... Right, it's adjusting itself because it it's sees going that to, moved. It's going to hand out the medicine to you. And wow. now all you have to do is grab that medicine and it'll release it. All right. Wow. And if you want, you can have some. It's just peanut onion. And <laughs> That's good. That's all right. Okay, so this is just one application this of what this does. This is one application, and it's research and you can, do, you, can, you, can, you can create anything. It's like an app for an iPhone. That's, you can do whatever you it's want. It's the general purpose properties of this that are really exciting. Joined now by uh, the co-director of Willow Garage, Keenan Weirobeck. Uh, Keenan, we, we saw one demonstration of this. Great idea. You make a bunch of these. You send them to researchers. Researchers find applications for them. Uh, tell me about the future of robotics. What are these things going to be able to do in our regular lives? We know that they're used in manufacturing. We know uh, other areas that they're used. Tell me what I don't know. So when we're talking about personal robotics, it's important to think, we think of it a lot like the personal computer, right? So it's about giving people, individuals, tools to automate the repetitive or menial parts of their everyday life. So mm -hmm. we've talked to people in lots of industries, in lots of job functions, and it's a real shame how many people spend very little time doing the creative problem solving that we're great at right. and spend most of their time doing repetitive menial tasks. When will the cost of these be something that you'll start seeing them uh, used in, in smaller size businesses, maybe even in people's homes? Um, that's not where we are today. We think that's a couple years out. Uh, but we don't think it's 20 years out. This is, this is starting to happen. And even this, the work that you see with PR2 going on around the world, uh, you know, Charlie's work as a great example of that, is just absolutely amazing, and they've only been out for four months. Uh, and we think that as these platforms are out there and other companies make better, cheaper platforms, and we make better and cheaper platforms, yep. uh, we're going to see applications coming really soon.